I get questions all the time about trust building. How do we rebuild trust after it's been broken? I mean, how do you even build it in the first place? And so today I wanna to talk about that and give you an analogy that I think will help with understanding that process when you're in a partnership with somebody. I'm Stacy Rockline and I'm on a mission to eradicate loneliness. And really trust building is at the heart of intimacy and that's what we're looking for. We want to feel emotionally intimate with people around us. We wanna feel seen, we wanna feel heard, we wanna feel like they'll catch us when we need them to. And you have to have trust for that. That's the basis of everything. So let's, let's just pretend for the moment that you are in a new relationship like you just met, maybe it's a friendship, maybe it's a relationship, a romantic partnership, but it's new. And so the trust building process looks like this. And I, and I want to uh, draw a parallel between building trust in relationships and an improv skill of yes and. So if you're in improv comedy, and you're employing the yes and rule, what this looks like is, first of all, it's improv, which means it's unscripted, you didn't prepare, you're just going to fly by the seat of your pants in the moment, and that's exactly what we do in our conversations. So very similar there. And what yes and is that one person is going to offer something to the other person, and that other person's job is to say yes to it. It's very important that they don't reject it. They don't abandon the idea. And so when we are in a relationship and one person gives an offering, maybe it's a piece of information that's vulnerable about themselves or something that happened that day that's tender or a feeling that they're having. They offer it to the other person and it's the other person's job to say yes. I accept, I receive it. It doesn't mean that you have to agree with it. It doesn't mean that you have to feel the same way. All it means is that you're saying to them, I see you. And unlike improv where someone offers something and you say yes and you add to it, a lot of times these conversations happen at different times. So the yes is saying, yes, I receive what you're telling me, I'm listening, I am acknowledging you, I'm validating you. And the and comes later when you're willing to share something about yourself. So when somebody is vulnerable with you and you say, I hear you, I see you, I have empathy for what you're going through, even if it's about me, they are building trust in you. Okay, now they're like, okay, Maybe I can trust this person. And when we just first meet someone, it's like a small thing, right? We'll, we'll give a small little share about ourselves. And then the other person is like, oh, okay. And you're like, oh, maybe I can trust them with something bigger and something bigger. But in order for real trust to be there, it has to go both ways. And at another point in time, usually, the other person has to bring something vulnerable back to you where you also say, yes, I receive that. That's the and part. So in improv, it's happening in real time, right? I put this offer out, the other person's like, yes, they go with it and they give something back that goes with the offer you made. Like if I'm all, okay, hey, I'm, your, I'm an old lady and you're my brother. They're like, yeah, and I'm your brother who, you know, can't tolerate sweet potatoes, I don't know. So then you go back and forth. And when you establish this basic trust, then you can start to throw crazier things out there because you believe that person's gonna catch you. So now, okay, I'm an old lady and you're my grouchy uncle. And the other person has to say yes to playing a grouchy uncle. It's a little bit more of a stretch, but they dive in and they do it and they add to it. And your job is also to yes and back. And the more trust you have, the crazier the things are that you can throw at the person. I am an old lady and you're my little baby chihuahua. Now, 
The person might think to themselves, I don't want to act like a baby chihuahua. That's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. The, all of that stuff can be happening inside them. The important part is that they say yes and they go with it. And that's the same thing in our relationships. Someone might bring something to you and you're like, God, I would not have read that situation that way, or I didn't mean it that way, or all of the things that are happening internally. But if you reject what they're sharing or you abandon them when they're sharing, then you've lost the opportunity to build this trust up just one conversation at a time. And that's how it happens. Sometimes we think that trust is something that takes time, but it actually takes action. It takes sharing something and it being received and that person sharing back and it being received. And in that way, you're layering it a little bit at a time. And the more you have, the bigger things you can bring, the more vulnerable things you can bring. And that is really important for building intimacy. So what does this look like if there's been, you're in a relationship, you've been in this relationship and there's been a massive like breach in trust? You know, there's been, you know, someone's been hiding spending or there's been an infidelity or something like that. So trust that was built is kind of shattered in that moment. And people ask me all the time, how do we rebuild it? How do we rebuild it? And there's this misconception that it's just time and not screwing up, right? That after some made up amount of months or years that by never making a mistake again, you're going to build that trust. But actually you can build it with action. And it's the same idea. It's where you share vulnerable things with the other person and they receive you and they share vulnerable things and you receive them. So let's say you're the person who breached the trust, right? You can be like, ah, oh, I had a hard day. I really wanted to go, you know, spend money on this thing, but I didn't do it. Or um, let me show you the bank statement and look how good I'm doing, even though I'm really struggling. You're sharing a vulnerable part of yourself and the other person receives you. They say, I see you. I understand that's hard. I'm so proud of you for doing what you did, right? Or if you screwed up, it's like, I, I this is a process. We're in this together. Your vulnerable, transparent share and their ability to receive that starts to rebuild this trust again. In the same way, that's the yes part. The and part is when they come to you and they're like, I'm really feeling insecure. I am just worried that you're going to go do something that's going to destroy our relationship further. They can be sharing with you and you can receive them back. Like, I get it. That makes sense. I made a big mistake. You know, it makes sense that you don't trust me. You, you see them for what they're sharing to you. And every time you do that without getting defensive or rejecting them or abandoning them in the moment of a share builds more trust. And that's really how you do it. You do it one conversation at a time. You don't do it just waiting over time. You, I mean, it's more complicated than that. Of course, you've got to make agreements about, you know, what kind of boundaries we have to put in place so it doesn't happen again. But this analogy is really helpful for understanding how you can engage in, in building trust in a really simple way. And that is sharing. And someone has to go first. Maybe it's you. Sharing. When the other person shares with you or hopefully the other person receives and just acknowledges you, sees you, doesn't leave your suggestion of like the baby chihuahua just dropped onto the ground right there so that the whole thing is just goes nowhere. And then later it goes back and forth. It has to be a two way street. So hopefully this will help you just have a better understanding of it. And I hope it helps you realize that you can do something. You, you don't have to just sit back and wait for trust to be bestowed on you again or the other person to prove themselves again. You can actually build it by having these conversations where you share on, honestly with each other, where you make yourself vulnerable, where you're transparent about what's happening, where you are honest about your struggles. When there's been a big breach of trust, when it's, something has gone that far, there's usually like stuff to work on, right? It's not like, oh my God, that's never going to happen again, ever, ever. And that may be true, but you will also have moments of weakness and moments when 
you're lonely and you want to reach out to the wrong person in your DMs. Like there is stuff to work on, but you can be building trust in the process by having conversations about that and actually receiving each other. So think, think about that yes and process if you are working on building trust. And thank you for the suggested topic. And if you have any other topics you want me to handle in one of these videos, please email me directly at stacy at stacyrockline.com. I love your suggestions and I would be more than happy to help out with that. Okay. Best of love to you. Bye.